Hello, and welcome back to something a little bit different. I've been doing the pre-recorded tutorials where I script out everything I'm going to say, and the code is all pre-written and optimized, but I think it might help the community more if I do like a live coding session, where I, I attempt a project I've never done before and show like the process of using Bevy and figuring out how to design something in an ECS pattern. So that's the plan for today, is I'm going to spend a couple of hours making a game and I hope by the end I actually have created the systems I want to create. So the game I'm going to try to make is based off of Don't Starve. So if you've never played the game before, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to do um, the basic first day getting to a campfire. So in the game you have an inventory system and you can pick up things like saplings and you can craft axes and our goal is to be able in our game to be able to craft a campfire. So when you get one twig and one flint, you can craft an axe, and then with the axe in your hand, you can cut down a tree. And then once you cut down the tree, which takes some time and you have it leaves behind a stump, you can pick up the wood, get some grass, and then you can build a campfire. And so this is going to be basically the loop we're trying to get to today. It's a simple survival crafting system with an inventory. Items you can pick up that leave behind stuff, items you can equip, and two crafting oper operations. So, I hope that makes sense, and that's going to be the goal, so let's go ahead and jump right in. I've already made and compiled a starter project here. I have made a placeholder graphic that I don't know if you can see, but as of now it just has a person in the top right that I'm going to be using. And I have my VS code set up, and the cargo toml file looks like this. And I've already compiled it once. I'm going to go ahead and make a commit, just to make everything nice. And let's get started using Bevy. So first, as always, we're going to use the Bevy preload in every file. And we need to make an app. It's actually been quite some time since I've done this from scratch. So let me see if I can remember how to add the default plugins. Default plugins dot run. Let's see how that works. I'll explain my VS code setup. All right, we got default default plugins. Now I want a window descriptor. I'll explain my deep my VS code uh, setup as we go on, but for now I just want to get the defaults going. So I'm going to add a resource window descriptor so it's not pushed up to the side like that because I'm using a tiling system. And here, what are we going to need? We're going to need probably just up to there. The plugins I'm using in VS Code to do all of this is the Vim plugin. And I'm using Linux with i3 to get the tiling windows. Don't care about position, don't care about that, that. I want true VSync so it doesn't use 100% of my CPU, especially when I'm recording audio. Uh, I don't really care. Actually, I do want it resizable. Title is going to be uh, DST clone. And height, I think it's like 1600 by 900. Works out for me. These are floats. And everything else can be the default. Okay. And I can show off. Clippy, I have set since I'm in a increased font size. Wait, why did that not work? Hmm. That should have just made a pop-up window. Creating terminal failed to get screen from object path. No host. Hmm, okay. Maybe if I restart VS Code before I show that off, I should actually probably get it working. Why is this not working? Okay, now it works. So it's a little janky, but because I have this big font and it's not easy to read, I have it set where if I do Clippy, it'll launch Clippy in a separate terminal. And I just kind of cheat by using um, like a named pipe FIFO file in Linux that VS Code will VS Code will write Clippy to the file 
and then a script running in the other terminal whenever it sees Clippy will actually clear the terminal and run Cargo Clippy. It's kind of janky, but it works for me. So let's see. It says here I need uh, two string, which is fair. And I need to init resource, not add resource. Okay. Are we happy now? Why are you not happy with, oh, that's too many dots. Expected zero arguments. Supplied one argument. Hmm. I, I also have built the docs over here. So I can look at, I guess, the app. And we can close this. Let's look at the Bevy app. See, what have I done wrong? Resource. Hello? Resource. Init resource. Oh, insert resource. Okay, that's what I get for following the spell check selections. And now this should work. Oh, I have to set resizable to false because otherwise the tiling window manager will just force it to whatever size it wants. Okay, got my width and height backwards. 16, nine. Cool, all right, basic window. And let's get a clear color. Clear color, here I'm gonna go for something green just so I can actually so just a green. gonna work that's that's a bit much um, so let's go RGB uh, 0 0.3 0 0.5 0 0.3 why are you not happy about this probably because I need a uh, parentheses sure that's not too bad all right and now let's go ahead and create a player we can move around so I'm going to create a system to spawn a player. And here I'm going to need commands. Oh, and I need to load our graphics. So let's also make a system to load graphics. Here I'm going to need commands. It's been a long time since I've actually used Bevy from scratch like this. So let's get rid of that for now. And I'm also going to need the asset server. Assets. Asset server and I need texture atlas so texture assets and I think you get this by assets texture atlas I think that works let me get more screen space okay so now I want to do what image handle should be assets.load. And what did I name my file? Like placeholder, placeholder.png. Okay. And now what do I need to do? Why is this not happy? Oh, because it doesn't know the type yet, but it'll figure it out soon enough. So let me get what? Uh, Atlas handle equals Hmm. How does this work again? I guess I can cheat. I can just go look at the tutorial. And here in ASCII, Atlas equals, okay, so you just create texture Atlas. Is there a way just to make a new one? I wonder. Let's go back to live coding. And we'll look at the docs one more time for texture Atlas. And here, new empty. This needs the handle and the dimensions. Sure. Now I've done it. Texture Atlas, new. I've already forgot what it was. Okay, it takes the handle, so that's an image handle. And VEC2, I think I made it 256 pixels. Cool. 
Sorry I'm a bit um, rough around the edges with talking while I'm coding, but this is a skill I'm hoping to develop by just doing it. So, thanks for suffering with me. And now I think I can do let player index equal the atlas. I guess this isn't a handle, it's just the atlas. Um, atlas dot add texture, which will let me just need a rectangle, so I'll get rect new, I guess. Never made a rectangle in Bevy. Oh, or I can just do it this way. And this will let me create each image one at a time, because I don't know if I'm going to have a square sprite sheet like I do in the tutorials. So what is T? Why is this so generic? I don't have anything here for me. Oh, rect minimax vec2. Sure, let's do that. Min colon vec2, I guess zero. And I think I made my sprite 32 pixels. I actually have never done this in Bevy, so we'll get to see if it actually works out. Why is this not right? Rectangle is defined by two points. There's no. How is that rectangle different? Hmm. Why is this not happy? not have this field. But a rectangle, when I go to definition here, does. And that's Sprite. I'm in Bevy. How weird. Okay. Sure. Okay. Well, let's do what it wants. Left 0.0. .0. I, I'm going to actually, this will be fun for me because I'm sure a lot of people will be able to tell me exactly why everything is so weird sometimes. So this will catch a lot of the things that just happen that you just kind of forget about. Why are you not happy? <sighs> Expected strut sprite rectangle, but found prelude rectangle. Oh... Well, that doesn't feel like that's how it should be. So here, you're probably talking about prelude rectangle, right? Use create, we're in sprite. No, you want a sprite rectangle. And what I've done here is the math rectangle. Oh, now I'm, I'm getting myself all twisted. Be sprite. So you actually do want this min and max stuff, but maybe if I specify Bevy Sprite, you'll figure out what I want. Cannot bar rows mutable. All right, well, that's the start. So this needs to be mutable, which makes sense because I'm about to mutate it. Oh, and now it works. Hmm. Well, that's something I don't know how I like. Why are there two different kinds of rectangle? Interesting. So that gives us the player index. And so the re reason why I want to use this is because it will return back the index that we get. So instead of doing a full grid, we can have like our trees be really big. And I think this is more in line with how most sprite sheets you find online are. So that's, that's very interesting. Okay. And I guess we need a resource now to hold these indices. Let's just make a place order graphic resource. And we need probably a handle to the atlas. And so far we only have player index, which I think is a U size. Okay, so now I can do commands dot Insert resource. Dude, I'm so bad at forgetting what I just named stuff. Please order graphics. One. 
placeholder graphics. I need to actually register this, with the assets. So let's get the Atlas handle now. Equals assets.add probably. Atlas. Of course, it's never just what you guess. Oh wait, texture assets dot add. Ha ha. Because we're not actually using the asset server, we're registering this. So good grief. You can just yank both of those. And I'm also excited to hear some good feedback on like how I actually code in Rust and if there's better ways to get around some of the problems I run into. Why are you upset now? Oh, sure, mutable. Cool. So theoretically, I'll try to run format as often as I can so things stay readable. Dependent field names. Yeah, I want to allow that. Well, Clippy, redundant old names. Thank you. I don't know why my brain is broken like that, but it just feels nice. Unless you forgot a exclamation mark. Sure, I guess I did. So now let's add a startup system to the pre-startup stage. Stage, startup, I forget what these are. These are stage labels. You're not gonna let me Google, yep. Okay, back to the docs. Let's look for pre-startup. Startup stage pre-startup. capital U. Okay. And load graphics. I probably need to include this. No. You're not happy. Because it's not startup state, startup stage. And now you're happy. Why are you not happy? Uh, it's not bound. Hmm. So this means that one of my types here is wrong. So I remember actually saying something about this in the tutorial, that this was a bit much. Let's go to the very cheat book and cheat a little bit. Hmm. Let's see, asset, load assets from file. Res asset server, res asset server. Ah, oh, it's a resource. Ah, are both of these resources? I guess they would be. Do. Cool, still not happy. Cannot borrow is mutable. Ah, because it has to be a mutable resource. Cool. I wonder how asset server here is not mutable. Because loading gives you an image handle, and then it has like an internal state where it actually like is loading it. So I wonder how the magic happens. So now if I run, nothing will happen, but it doesn't crash. So now we can spawn the player. So all I need here is commands, spawn an entity, and the resource we just made, which is called what? Sure, graphics, and it's a resource type placeholder graphics. Now I want to do commands.spawn bundle. I think it's sprite sheet bundle I want. Yeah. 
spreadsheet bundle needs. I guess we can get away with just those two. The sprite, which I'm going to need to create. Let uh, sprite equal texture atlas sprite new, which takes the index, which we already have, fire index, and the handle. So that should be all we need. So I can do sprite sprite, delete these. And put the handle in. It's graphics dot. Okay, what if I name this? Uh, sure. Texture Atlas. Come on. Why is my fingers not working? Texture Atlas. Okay. And default. Are you unhappy? Why are you unhappy? Because it doesn't implement copy. Sure. Does implement clone. Okay. And then we have that as a startup system, and we should finally have something on screen. And startup system, spawn player. Once we get through all this boiler point, I'll try to explain more of how the systems go, but this is all straightforward. We see nothing on screen because we don't have a camera. So we need a camera. So spawn camera. Needable commands, that's all we need. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing I do in the tutorial because I like having normalized coordinates. So this is gonna be a uh, Orthograph, orthographic camera bundle, uh, new 2D, beautiful. And then I want the camera dot left. Okay, let's look at what this is made out of. It's a camera. As an orthographic pro projection that I want to set up. So let's change orthographic projection. Or a graphic projection dot left will be negative one and then right will be one up will be negative up will be one and down will be now oh, it's top and bottom isn't it top and bottom and then actually I want this to be the resolution of the screen which is going to be 16 by 9. Are you not happy because you're not mutable? And to make this actually work, you have to set the scaling mode. Scaling mode. And I'm going to have to include this. I think I actually misspoke in the tutorial. This doesn't give you pixel art graphics. What it does is it lets you specify the left, right, top, bottom like we do. Otherwise, one world unit will be one pixel, which I just don't like because I don't trust it. If I'm playing on a different size screen, the game might look different, and that's just a bit much for me to be worried about in testing. So I like to have everything very normalized and understandable. Okay. Oh, and we actually need to spawn this entity. Spawn bundle camera. And what's, I think actually it's named camera by default. Still nothing. Why? Oh, because I didn't. Dead code warning. Spawn camera. Beautiful. Big black line. So why is that so incorrect? Ah, well, because the camera is one by one and the sprite's massive. So we need to change the player sprite to have a custom size. Sprite.size? No. Let's go look. I don't know why I try to remember stuff. Custom size, of course. Okay. 
So this is, again is just another problem with doing the camera like I do it. But I don't know. I guess I could try something out different today. This is going to be what? 0.1. And this needs to be mutable. And that's vec to new or splat, I guess. I also never explained this in the tutorial, but oh, I guess I probably should have because the um, go to definition doesn't work. If I look at the code here or the docs, vec to splat will create a vector of all the elements set to V. I can probably increase the font size on that. Sorry about that. So now do we actually have a character on screen? Beautiful. Look at the little guy. Um, make him a little bigger. I, it, I never know what size to make things that will be visible on all screens. But we have the our dude. So... I guess that's all of the intro boy replete. Now we actually have to make a game, huh? Hmm. Guess what? It's 25 minutes, one Pomodoro, to get us to a character on screen. Don't know how fast or slow that is, but it's what we have. Hmm. I guess next we need movement. So let's do uh, player movement. Oh, we don't actually need commands. What do we need? We need the keyboard, definitely. I might actually do gamepad if I have time today. So this is a resource type input, and I want the key code variant of it. I've done this so much that I just have these things memorized, but if you are struggling to remember the crazy stuff, the cheat book is beautiful for finding all of this. I guess I also need to go ahead and tag the player. I'm just right. player. So I don't want to move the camera. And I'm also probably going to need to make the camera follow the player. Okay. Uh, pound derive component. And let's give him just a speed. Sure. Just get started. And now when I spawn the player. I'm going to go ahead and insert our new component, insert player with a speed of one unit per second, a third of a unit per second. That's something where having the um, world a set size helps me rationalize about, because I can think about it. The world is two units wide. Okay, so we're also probably going to need time, because I just said per second. Here's the time resource, and let's query for the player. So that's a query. I'm going to want to mutate the transform. And I'm going to do with player. Beautiful. So let's do what player transform. I'm going to say there should only ever be one player in the game because why wouldn't there be? So I can do player query dot get moot. Um, that's not right. Single mute. Beautiful. And I want a mutable transform. And then why are you not happy? Oh, because this is not mutable. And I'm just going to do WASD controls for default. If keyboard. I don't know if I already said this, but I might also try um, doing some like keyboard rebinding just to see what that looks like. Because I think all I need is like the player to have, or I guess a resource of keybinds that will check the key codes. So if key code A, sure, I want to take the transform dot translation dot X. We're not doing collision yet. By player, oh, I actually need the player speed, huh? So I can't do this. I need to get a reference to the player. 
and make this a tuple. And now mutable player transform and player. Probably should change my VS code to word. All right, it's cargo format. I wonder if I can change cargo format to um, word wrap more aggressively at this font size. It's player dot speed times time dot delta seconds, I think. Sure. And this is player transform. And now we can move left. We'll need up, down, left, and right. So on D, we'll add to the X. On W, we'll add to the Y to go up. And on S, we'll go down. And that is the system. Let's see how that works. Beautiful. Look at the little guy. Hmm. I just got the temptation to make this all 3D and do the don't starve um, camera angle, but that's not really the purpose of what we're doing today. Okay. And let's just make the camera follow the player. So here I'm just going to need to grab the player again and the camera. So I don't need to mutate anything on the player. And this time I only need the transform. I haven't like fact checked this, but I see no reason why it wouldn't be true. But I think doing the whiff constraints will help um, the scheduler figure out how to run more things in parallel. Not that it really matters for systems like this, but just a habit I'm in. And I actually want this to be uh, with camera. Okay. Hmm. I'm still probably not going to use the UI, so there will only be one camera in the game. So once again, I can just do the get single mute stuff. Let's see, I don't want to mutate the player transform. And I don't need the player. And it's just single. And then we get the camera transform. Camera query, single mute. I have no idea if this is incredibly boring or not because I'm kind of just saying what I'm typing, but I'm sure someone out there will find value in just seeing the whole process from beginning to end. So that's what I'm going for. If this isn't for you, don't worry about it. There will be um, more scripted tutorials on the way. I just thought this would be a nice way to spend my Friday and to try to learn a new skill. So the, we only want to match the X and Y because the camera needs to be far away from the wire. But there we go. And I want to be able to mutate this. Hmm, no. I always forget the dot translation. Actually, I can be a freak and do this. Isn't that gross? Way to make the code completely impossible to read. And I didn't add the system. Okay. Now, unfortunately, there's going to be um, no way to know if this is actually... Oh, come on, dude. It's going to look like nothing's happening because it's an infinite green and the, um, ah, uh, yes, it's an infinite green and the camera will be following the player exactly. So it looked like nothing's happening, but I promise I'm pressing buttons. So we have a possible query conflict. We should use without player or make a query set to get around this. I probably need to cover query sets in the tutorial. I'll have to find a reason to add that as an example. Maybe in future one of these, I'll start from the tutorial code. But I don't know. There's also probably value in just having the repetition. And I'm saying different things about it now live than I did when I was making the video. So looks like nothing's happening, but that's what we wanted. 
Let's add the Egoe Inspector. I kind of actually don't remember how to do that. So let's go and look at its GitHub. Egoe Inspector. Once that's open, I'll go back over here. Look at the guy's examples. Do, do, do. Demo, I guess. Default main. Spectre plugin. Uh, and plugin. Inspector plugin. Won't go on default. I'm hoping. Doesn't look wrong. Why is Clippy not happy? Cannot infer type. Well, what does that mean? Hmm. Is there a simple, simple demo source data? But I did default. What type do you need? What are you? Phantom data T. Hmm. Hmm. How interesting. Inspector. Plugin. See the great, great waffle docs. You just, do you always have to do data? Do I do that in this tutorial? It's in main problem. Oh, it's in debug actually. World Inspector plugin. Ah. Okay. Sure. Oh, now I've done it. Okay. Learn something new. That actually is really interesting because you can change the font size. I think. Oh, good grief. I hit go to definition and VS Code does not seem to know where... The... Oh, it's indexing. Okay. Do you exist? Are you real? I know you're real. So... Inspector plugin. New. I wonder if I could change the font size on this thing. Somehow. Hmm. Maybe I need to dig deeper in the inspector and actually see how it works. So default new appear to be the same, but why not? Okay, seems to be working. On full screen, close that. Hmm. Is not working. Does this need to be after the default plugins? Is that a rule? Oh, wow, it has to be after the default plugins. How interesting. Why? Grief, what do you. New, and then new does nothing except create one of phantom data. Uh... Oh, does default plugins create like the registry or something for it? I should probably move this up just in case. Well, that's um, also interesting and worth inspecting more in detail. player a name because I just saw he doesn't have a name. Name new player. Think. Okay. And let's clean this up just to make everything happy. Using formatting just to remove curly braces. Cool. 
So that's all the boiler plate, and we now have a game, I guess. So next we need Flint for the character to pick up. So let's go ahead over to my sprite sheet, and let's do some graphics. And you get to watch some live art. Uh, do, do, do. I'm going to try to make this 16 by 16 just so we can experiment more with um, the tile sizes. Uh, what in the world does Flint look like? Mm, very gray. It's very gray kind of thing. Mm, beautiful. That's a piece of Flint. You can make an axe out of that. Okay, and I need to export this as my placeholder graphics. Now back in VS Code, I should see. Uh-oh, where did I just export that to? Uh, let me not do this on screen in case there's something crazy in my folders. Oh no, I just lost that window. Uh-oh. Well, good grief. I drug it to a separate screen, but apparently that's off screen for A-Sprite, which is against the rules. So if I uh, save changes, sure, placeholder. Hmm. Hmm. Right, let me reopen A-Sprite. Bring it back over on screen. Export. Aha, it's back. Don't drag that off screen. It doesn't work. Okay. Uh, overwrite it. Where did that export the first time? I'm going to find that in a couple of years. Ah, just sent that to the wrong place. Bring it back. Send it there. Is this, is VS Code just not live updating? Okay. Baby tutorials, uh, live coding, assets, fair, that's one. Okay, art is not what I wanted to have a problem with today. Why are you not exporting? You're right there, aren't you? Scribble, scribble, scribble. <gasps> ah! I renamed it to be Camel Case. Well, that's weird. So now, are you gonna. You should live update. Why? Why, 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 why? Assets. I want to overwrite it. I want to export. Beautiful. All right, we're in. Sorry about that. That was just some of the struggle. So now graphics is also going to have the Flint index. I have no idea if this is a good way to handle graphics. I'm kind of just trying something out and seeing how it develops, which is part of the fun of doing things live. So now we need the Flint index, which is at, I guess, 32, I'd hope. That might be off by one. And the max is going to be, I guess, mm, 32 plus 16 is 48. 16. I'm not feeling confident. I am Flint Index. Might as well. That was a place where I just almost got lazy and didn't keep to my arbitrary rule. So it spawns some Flint. Spawn Flint. Commands. Mutable commands. I, I've lost the flow of coding. And the graphics resource. Why is this not happy? They're choosing a more descriptive name. 
just underscores and digits. Ah, well, that's because I didn't actually name it. So I guess no name is not descriptive. It's weird because you'd think that wouldn't compile. All right, I'm starting to slow down. I might get up in a second and go get some tea or refill my coffee. And let's just copy and paste because we're freaks. And the sprite now should be the Flint Index. And it probably needs to be smaller than the player. And all looks good. Let's name it Flint. And add this as a startup system. And we'll now spawn Flint. Okay, we have Flint. Kind of looks like my graphic. I don't actually know if it's off by one or not, but we'll discover that as we go on, I'm sure. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make a commit, and I'm going to put a break in the recording and go pace around, get my thoughts together, and come back with more coffee and more energy. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I have more coffee. Um, I'm going to try to speak a little bit louder because I listened back to some of what I recorded and I realized I'm just kind of mumbling what I'm typing. But this is a very difficult this is a very difficult skill to get your head around so right? that's part of the experience I guess so I'm not gonna lie I didn't actually think at all about the code while I was gone but let's just see what we can jump into so we have flint on the ground and the player probably needs to pick it up mmm I see some bleeding from the flint so I probably need to add um, padding do my sprites. So I'm just going to write that down on paper. Yeah, I don't know a better way to fix that without padding. I think it's like fundamental to the graphics programming. So next, what do we need? I could clean this up into a separate file, but I'd rather wait a second. I guess we need to be able to pick up the flint. So let's just start writing it, I guess. Uh, player pick up. I want when you press space, press space to pick up items. So I'm gonna need the keyboard. which is the input resource of type key code. Probably gonna need the player, which is a query. Sorry, it's gonna take me a second to get back into this. I'm gonna need the transform of the player. Probably gonna eventually need like the inventory, but let's start with just this. I don't know if I want to have the inventory be a separate entity or not, is what I'm thinking about. Because the player graphic and inventory are, like, fundamentally separate. And the inventory is going to, like, render separate and have its own completely separate set of systems. So, just thinking about what I want to do. And I guess I need to query for everything that can be picked up. So let's make a component pick upable. Sure. And this is going to be a public strut pick up upable. That's a word. And I'll add it to the flint. Pick upable. Give me one second to go close my door. So now we just need to query for everything that can be picked up. 
And I'm going to need the transforms of those. And... Hmm... And this will conflict with the player, so why not? Without uh, player. Sorry, I'm thinking about a lot of things right now. So when you actually pick up something, you want to sometimes destroy the entity on the ground, and sometimes you want to leave behind like a stump. So pick upable here is going to need to be able to change the entity that was picked up. I guess? Hmm. So I guess I'm gonna at least need to despawn the flint. So let's get the entity. Two. And commands to despawn it. I always like to put the mutable there for some reason on commands. Hmm. Sure. Okay. So player there will only be, only be one of so let's get the player transform as the player query dot single mute or dot yeah single mute and if space was just pressed I think in don't starve when you hold down space you walk toward the nearest item but I that's polish we can maybe add later. I'd uh, to do if held. Walk to nearest. So if just pressed uh, space, then what? I want to loop over every pick upable, and I want to see if I'm close enough. So let me go ahead and get like arm range on the player. Uh, arm length, sure. And the player here will need to have an arm length. Which I guess it's 0.1 for now. Doesn't really matter. And then I'm actually gonna want that data here. So I will not make that just a constraint. Oh, good grief, now I've done it. I don't know why I say weird things, but that's what happens when you're coding and trying to speak. Cool. So we have the player, and we have the input. Let's loop over everything that can be picked up, and if it's within our reach, we'll pick it up, I guess. So for... If you hear dogs outside, I apologize. There's not much I can do about it. Entity and transform. I'm getting noisy with my typing. And oh, the dogs are actually going to be quite angry for a second. If the transform is. Actually, let me just wait a minute for the dogs to calm down. I'll be back. Okay, I think the dogs have calmed down now. So. Where was I? I was testing the translation, the distance between the two translations. Is there actually a good way to do distance in Bevy? I'm sure there is. So let's go to the docs. Oh, full screen the wrong thing. And what would you call it? I'd call it distance. Hmm, vec2 distance. So dot distance, sure, okay. So transform that translation dot distance. Oh, is there? Hmm. I can all don't like this dot distance stuff. I wish there was a way I could do distance, but I probably can. Let me try it out. Vec three distance of that, and the other, which is the player transform. Not translation. I wish I could query just for the translations. That would help most of the time. Uh, yeah, and that's that works. Cool. And I want to say if the player dot arm length is less than the distance. 
format. Give me my screen space back. What are you not happy about? Ah, query is not mutable. It doesn't need to be. Oh, then why am I asking for it? I guess first let's just despawn the entity. Command dot despawn recursive. Oh, command dot entity. Make sure I'm actually recording. Yeah. Dot entity dot despawn recursive. Oh, please don't make me type recursive. Okay. That, what do you... Very complex type. Yeah, sure. I will allow very complex types because I don't know if there's a way around it. Um, type complexity. Sure. Arm length. What do you mean you're not used? Oh, because it's in dead code. Because this needs to be a system. Player pickup. I wonder. I could add another plugin to let me like default graphic draw a circle showing the range of the player's arm. I don't know how much value that gets us for how much effort it would take. Hmm. Okay, well that was in range. Let's go all the way over here. I bet I have this backwards. Yes. So now, if I get far away and press space, I won't pick it up. But as I get close, I do pick it up. And by pick it up, I mean make it stop existing. Okay, so what does picking up an item actually mean? Ooh, now we're into the actual design. So I guess I'm, I'm just going to start out janky. I don't know how scalable this will be, but let's just get going. Uh, let's make an enum of item types. Which would be nice because I should be able to like compare this with graphics and all kinds of stuff. And our first item type is Flint. I don't like an S at the end of enum. I don't actually remember if I like a capital letter. I guess I do. Hmm. Okay, I guess we want an inventory component, which I'm just going to put on the player for now. I don't know why I was thinking about making this more complex than it needs to be. So the inventory. I guess it's going to have a vector of item type and number. So let's make um, an inventory entry, I guess. Entry. Just gonna just have the type or the item, which is item type and account, which should be unassigned. And this will just have a vector of items or a vector of entries. Hmm. I don't actually want this to be a vector. I want a fixed inventory size. So what if we make an item type none? And I guess the pick up a bowl also needs to know its item type. Uh, I can't use the word type. I wish I knew a better word for that. Hmm. So I want a fixed array of these. Can I derive default on this, do you think? And it'll give me my none type. Default. Default on enums is experimental C issue. I'm sure that's a good experiment. So I do default on this. Can't say I've ever done this before. Are you still not happy? Do I have to use nightly for the experimentals? 
I don't really want to go to Nightly. Hmm. Can I just impl default? How do you uh, impl default for enums? Impl default for item type. And what does this need? Oh, okay. It will return item type none. Why is that experimental? Cool. And the flint is going to be item type pickup or flint. So pick up a bowl is going to have item, item type, flint. So now that these have a default, I want to make this an array flex size 5. Let's do 5. We're not even going to have 5 items in the game. But this will make it easier when we're trying to do um, like graphics. How do you set up an array in Rust? It's been so long. Rust by example array. Cool. I'm not going to show this. It'll be fine. So my items are type inventory entry and I need Five of them. It's the semicolon that I always forget. Hey, right. so let's add an inventory to the player. This is about to get complex. I'm feeling. So maybe I'm happy that it's um, fixed size. Can I do default? Please. If I derive default on you. Will you figure it out? Just use the formatter to fix that. Oh, and I probably need to go in and make everything inspectable while I'm here. Yeah, let me just go ahead and make it inspectable because I'm going to need to be able to look at all this. Um, get an environment on inspectable. I hope you can inspect um, arrays. Sorry, I'm deep in thought. That's why I'm not talking as much as I should be. Ooh, you can. Beautiful. And the player also needs to be inspectable. And the pick upable. I tend to only derive stuff when I'm like actually using it. I don't know if that's good or bad practice. Let's pick up a bowl. And I need to register inspectable. Not register inspectable. Make me type it once just to make sure I know how to type. I probably want what? What did I do? I did inventory. I did player. And I did pick up a bowl. Now I can see the flint. Let's type flint and I can change it. Beautiful. The player has inventory. Ooh, that's nice. All right. Uh, so now when we pick up, we need to actually put it in the inventory. So let's uh, get the player's inventory, I guess, mutably. We're saying mute inventory. Query is now mutable. Our player now has an inventory, which is going to be mutable. And we're going to get single mute. And now, uh, why do I always do this whiff thing when I know I'm going to eventually need data on it? I probably could just get better habits, I guess. Extra parentheses. And pick up a bowl. Okay. I need to stop thinking ahead because that's making me not talk as much. 
So I want to loop over the entire inventory. If you already have it, I want to add to it. Sure. If you don't have it and you have an open slot, I want to put it in your inventory. And if your inventory is full, I probably want to play a sound effect or something, but that's for the future. So let's think. Uh, for slot in inventory dot, what did I call this? Items? Can you iterate over this? I'm sure you can. If slot dot item equals pickupable dot item, add it if you have it. I want to say slot dot u size, oh, uh, slot dot count uh, plus equal one, and uh, go away. And I probably just want to return. I think I don't even want you to pick up one thing per space press, so returning's fine. And I probably need eek partial eek on this thing. Sure. I need mutable, so I'm going to mutate the slots. Is there a mute? Probably. Sure. Uh, I want, I'm, I'm just going to do this iteration five times, or three times. So that's if you already have it. Now, if you don't already have it, and this won't get the closest entity, this will get some entity at random. So let's add a, a to do of get closest, not just first. Sure. Make sure I'm recording. Not muted. Cool. Um, so pick it up. If you don't, I'm going to loop over, and if the slot item is none, I've already forgot what I called this stupid thing, item type, none, I'm going to change the slot count and the slot item to be what we have. I'm going to set it equal to one, sure, that should be safe. And item, and this should be pickup dot item and not plus equal because that doesn't make any sense and despawn mm, yeah that, that also can be copy yeah I probably should just get in the habit of doing this on all enums clone and copy eek clone and copy are all things I'll always need and I don't want to compare, I just want to set equal. And if you're full, this should just do nothing by default. Okay. So it's test. Let's test if this works. Pick it up, it goes away. My inventory now has flint, one of them. Beautiful. I guess let's make more um, entities that we can pick up. Let's just uh, let's just copy and paste this. Sure. This is just for testing that the inventory system works how we want. So let's do um, what items are we gonna have? We're gonna have an axe, twig, and have grass. I think that's all we're actually going to have in the game. Oh, wood. Pine cone. Is that more than five? Sure. Okay. So now let's make um, an axe on the ground. Let's make some wood on the ground. Let's make a um, pine cone on the ground. Let's make a couple more of those. This is a horrible way to do this. Um, 
What else do I want? I want grass on the ground. And I probably want, what was the last one I did? Twig. All right, let's just see what that does. Hmm, you're very unhappy about something. What are you unhappy about? Sure. <sighs> Need to do dot clones. So let's do replace sprite comma with sprite dot clone comma. Please actually do it. Thank you. Seem to be happy. Oh, okay. Have I successfully made an inventory system? I picked up a flint, a pine cone, some wood, an axe. A second pine cone, a twig, and that's it. And what's left on the ground is grass, because I don't have inventory room for it. So that all works. That all works. All right, let's delete this abomination. And I don't need to clone this right anymore. So we have flint that we can pick up in an inventory system. Okay. What's next? Do we want to do crafting next or some UI next? Let's do, let's take a break. Let's do some UI. So I want to make a UI box. Can I do rectangles? I am not an artist. Beautiful, that's a UI box. So let's uh, export this. It's putting it in the right place. We're gonna get more bleeding. I need to fix that soon. And we're gonna add a new graphic for the UI box. I'm also considering, do I wanna use Bevy's UI? I don't think I do, because I wanna make a full video on Bevy's UI. And right now this just feels like the easiest way to go about it. So what am I doing? Oh, I'm making the graphics. Hold the box index. Sure. Now in the graphics here, we need to actually create the box. Hmm. Wonder when I add this, it's given a reference to it. I guess we can experiment. Can I do this after, or is Rust going to tell me now? So I did this at zero, 32, and I did it, how big did I make it? 64, and 32. And we'll set the box index here. Yeah, this would be an example of a place where it's probably fine to uh, not do the redundant. Ah, value used after move, so yeah. You do have to do it in this order. Thanks, Rust. I don't know why I'm running. Nothing's going to happen, but I just want to drink coffee. Why is so much of my CPU being used? Hmm. Interesting. All right, well, let's spawn the UI. Sure. My brain's starting to slow down. Spawn uh, inventory UI. So here I just need commands and our graphics. I'm just gonna cheat and grab that. 
and paste. And I'm also going to grab the spawning a sprite function code again. And before I forget, make it a startup system. Spawn inventory UI. At some point, this is going to get a bit much, and I'm going to need to break it out into separate files and plugins. But right now, I'm just kind of moving forward as I go. So this is going to be the box index. And use a semicolon, sure, I will. I could be janky. And just make this a child of the camera. Is that sinful? Now I guess we'll find out. Let's start out making this a child of the camera. That way it will always follow the camera around. Sure. Why not? Camera query. And here I'm going to query for the transform of the camera, the entity of the camera, and the transform of it. Yeah. With camera. This can't be too wrong, can it? So let's go ahead and let uh, camera int because I don't want if I just spawn it in a set place in the world it won't move around with the player so I can make it a child of the player child of the camera or something separate that also follows the player or the options I'm considering let's do camera trans why do I need to transform with the camera I guess I don't because I'm going to put this at a fixed position. This tuple is useless. And this is camera query dot single. Right. Wow, I wish I could type sometimes. So let's do uh, what box equal. Oh, let's make a vector of boxes. I'm going to make five boxes. So let's create a vector of boxes that we're going to push as to children. I need to slap myself, maybe go walk outside and get my brain right after this function. So let's do let boxes equals vec new. Is that a thing? Yeah, sure, that works. And then uh, for i in range, or i 0 to 5. Aha. Come here. I know how to type Rust. I want to do um, boxes dot push the idea of our new box. Right? It's not happy, probably for many reasons. Yeah. Okay. I need to clone the sprite, and at the end of the function. I will push my boxes as a child of the camera. So commands dot entity, camera entity. I'm gonna go ahead and push you some children, which needs to be a reference to boxes. Enjoy. What are you still not happy about? Oh, boxes has to be mutable. All right. And now we need to actually position these on the screen. So I think sprite sheet bundle here will let me set up the transform. It does. Transform. Here I want the translation to be a vec3 new. I don't know about x yet. Y is going to be like minus 0.8. And Z is going to be just minus one. So it's, because that's relative to the camera. Uh-huh, comma. Why, why am I doing triple dot? Why is the tab to complete doing that? I'm not hitting dot three times. So what's the X value need to be? 
the x value. I, okay, what's what's makes let's do some math. So let spacing equals if they're gonna be sized 0.1, probably want 0.15 between them, and uh, we'll do a starting x, which will be minus 0.65 times uh, resolution. Let's make the resolution the constant. What pub const resolution, which is an F32. I actually don't know if I should be using F32 or F64. Sure, it doesn't matter when you actually look at the analytics. Times resolution and just so I don't get myself in a bad place. The camera also is relative to the resolution. So now I want to spawn at the x value of starting x plus the spacing times i, maybe. And of course, i is now a floating point number because, sure. Ooh, crash. Main panicked. Error, no entities. Hmm, nah, I agree. Can I label this? Camera, you go after camera. Hmm, still crash. No entities. Why? Let me make sure it's crashing where I think it is. It's crashing at 86. Yeah, okay. No entities. Ooh, because there's a one frame delay, so just doing it in order doesn't change anything because commands is a queue. How interesting. I need to... And post if somebody like in the comments could write down all of the weird pitfalls I run into. That'd be great, because I tend to forget most of these. And these are things that should end up in tutorials. And that's a, a beautiful UI graphic I've made. Why is this? Also, how do after labels work if the label doesn't exist? That should crash. That, that honestly would be an issue I'd open with Bevy. If the label doesn't exist and I do an after because it's strings, that should crash. So it, that actually worked. I just need to think a little bit. Starting X actually should be negative like two times the spacing. Negative 2.5 times the spacing. Oh, I can make this generic. Oh, is that centered? The negative two. Cool. Uh, let's make a constant inventory size. Inventory size. Inventory size, which is the U size. And let's just make it 10 for testing. And let's make this inventory size. And we'll loop to inventory size. So I don't have this magic five floating around. And then you're gonna be inventory size. As F32 divided by two Minus 0.5, maybe, is how I think this all just worked out. Why are you not happy? You can't do negative. Why can't you? Oh, because it's you sized? 
Probably a lot of unnecessary parentheses there, but whatever. Hmm. That's not centered. Would it be centered if it was five? Man, I'm gonna love doing math live. That's always great. That's not centered. So why? What have I done wrong? Is it just divide by two? Why did I do this minus 0.5 in the first place? Hmm. Plus 0.5. If you asked me why it was plus 0.5, I couldn't tell you. It's probably because it's the center point or something. All right. So now I can make it have 10 inventory items. And our code is now much more ex extensible. Ooh, that looks nice. I mean, the graphics are horrific, but that looks nice. Ah. Oh, all right, I'm getting the temptation that the um, inventory entry should be generic, or more of. Yeah, it all should be generic over this item type. And we can make a nice plugin. We could distribute it out to the Buffy ecosystem. Oh, okay, that's the temptation. Maybe, maybe. Hmm. All right, let's actually put our graphics in the inventory. What does that look like? So I think what that looks like. Can I just insert a hash map as a resource? Probably now we're getting into overkill. But what I want is I want to map from the item types to their graphics handle or to their graphics index. Hmm. Would that, would I be, and I guess that means that the graphics here, actually, the graphics should hold that map, I think, yeah, and should every UI box, every UI box is its own entity, but that also probably should know which slot it is, yeah, okay, let's try adding a map here. Hash map. Uh, item map. It's going to be a hash map from item type to use size. Right? Hello? Ooh, Bevy hash map. How fancy. What are you? Do you use a faster hashing function? Uses an error construction. Uses a hash, a high-speed hashing algorithm. It's designed for performance and is not cryptographically secure. Oh boy. Okay, I will not put my credit card details in here. I know that's not what that means, but anyway. Hmm. Yeah. Is a hash map right? Is there a better way? To do a map from every variant of an enum to a use size. Hmm, that runtime. Yeah. All right, sure. Let's just chug along. So now, I actually don't want my flint sprite here. I want the graphics to do. Uh, let's get what item map equal hash map new. Why was new 2D the option? That's not true. And then item map add. This isn't feeling like it's working. I don't actually remember what the um, interface for a hash map is, so I might have to look that up. 
what we can do. We can just start trying around. Clint. How is Clippy not happy? Do, do, do. The function for the associated item was found. Is it default? Ooh, default. And I guess insert? Ooh, K and V. Okay. Now, why are you not happy? Oh, hash. Okay, let's implement hash. I'm actually getting kind of excited. Uh, so graphics dot item map. I get item type. Flint. Oh man. This is going to turn into a function to spawn every item. Mismatch type. Oh, okay, and we'll expect it. No graphic for flint. Make sure I change that when I copy and paste it. And add an asterisk because why wouldn't you? And put an ampersand here because why not? Sure. The dogs are angry again, so I'm going to finish this up and then um, go take a walk. Maybe scream at them. I don't know. I'm not going to scream at them. Um, so I apologize if you can hear them. Item map. Item map. Can I not insert to you? Or I need to be mutable, don't you? The dogs are getting angrier, so I'm trying to finish up. Oh, that works. So now we should be able to draw the same graphic for the inventory. And I wonder if it would be better to um, have like multiple graphics, like one on the ground, one when you're in the inventory. I guess we'll do that when we get the twigs, which we'll leave behind the sad branch. But I think we're about two hours in. And this feels like not a bad place. Like, I know it's not much, but I feel like we're actually making some progress. So I hope this is providing value to people, and I'll be back after a second coffee break. Okay, and I'm back. So give me a second to remember where I was. I think we were just finishing up with the graphics rework. Um, and we were going to add graphics to the UI. I did realize we need item counts on the UI, which might make me want to use Bevy's fonts. Hmm. Let me go look at the Bevy examples for fonts and see if they're not too bad. Do do bevy examples uh, UI text so we spawn we'll need a UI camera so we'll have to handle that uh, align self position absolute text text with section. I guess I can figure this out live. Um, we do need a font. So, Sphera Sans, that's the font Bevy uses. Is that free? Or, let's get a, a font. Probably could have downloaded this off screen, but this will do. So I'm on Google Fonts. This look good. License. Open fonts. I think that's good. Mm. 
free Libre open source. Enable others, document, oh, good grief. You must put your copyright, being, oh wait. Um, what font does Bevy use? I'll just copy how Bevy does it. I'm assuming they're legally in the right. Their assets, fonts, their bold stamps font. You have a license file or something for this font? No, that's Bevy's license. Hmm. I'm assuming they don't own this font. So I mean, I guess this is part of the work. It's just seeing if this is a Google font as well on the open fonts license, I guess. Free we use them. Yeah, okay. I guess I'm just gonna use it. Sure. Download font family. Uh, don't look at my files. Live coding. Assets, sure. And I'm gonna unzip it. Yeah, let's just get them all. Now, over here, in assets. Oh, we have a font text. I guess I'll just leave that. Um, I don't need the zip. Don't need italic. I'll keep regular and bold. So let's see, how do we create a font in Bevy? Examples, UI, text. Let's create a new system for creating the inventory. Actually, we can do this in the spawn inventory UI. I'm really debating if I want to get into all this right now, but I'll just copy and paste from Bevy, this giant block of mess. <laughs> and we'll spawn a UI camera, sure. This probably needs to be in the spawn camera. And now everywhere, I want to just make a game camera component so I can still query single for my uh, camera. So we don't need inspectable. We're just going to do a game camera query or game camera component. If I do this, do I want to make everything UI graphics? Probably not. This is just a tag. And I might decide against this as I go on. Honestly, that's ah, probably shouldn't make a commit in a non compiling state. Expected nothing. Oh. Yeah, sure. How does Bevy do this magic dot default stuff? I'd love to know. And I'll just get the asset server here because why not? Assets, asset server, which is a resource. Dude, more of this default stuff. And I need mine assets. Okay, and that's not where mine is. Mine is going to be called uh, Quattro Centro, Centro Sans Regular TTF. Gotta love strings. Crash. Ah. Yep. 
So everywhere I do camera, here it needs to be game camera, actually. Come on. Game camera. Camera. Is that the only place? Game camera. Beautiful. Create a bunch of text. What is this text? Oh, Biffy. Created a bunch of times. No font. Font failed to load. Misspelled it. A T T R O C N T stands. There is Hello Bevy. Uh, color is going to be black. Font size 16. Value the number 0. Um, positioning. Can I do percent? I don't want it in pixels. Percent. I wonder if these can be mismatched. This should be percent. I want it, what, 10% off the bottom? Is there a better way to do this? Undefined to auto? Eh. So right, wait, can I do left? Do you think? Percent 15. Sure, let's see what that does. Oh, there's a cute little zero. Make the font size bigger. I'll show why I don't actually like doing it this way in a second. Um, sorry, I'm thinking. So it'd be a uh, 50% minus, or okay, where do we start? Starting X. Okay, starting percent is starting X divided by resolution, right? Uh, it's 0.5 plus that times 100. So we start halfway at the screen and we go right a little bit. Sure, starting percent. Not exactly. Hmm. Starting X divided by resolution. Hmm. Why? Because that should be how far along the screen we are. If I just do negative that. Why is that where you are? I'm sure there's much easier ways to do this. I'm just suffering through it because I haven't done my video on UI, so I also haven't researched it too closely myself yet. Um, just kind of like make it up. Why is this not working? Am I gonna have to get out the pencil and paper? So we have our starting X value. Hmm. Oh, wait. This has a percent. Divide by two. Maybe. And now we do uh, 0.5 minus that.
How interesting. Okay. Plus that. Oh man, I riddled it out. So there's the number zero. Um, let's go 8%. By full screen, it still kind of looks okay. Sure. Um, it's the starting percent times what? Or plus what? Uh, spacing percent. Which is spacing. Divided by 2.0. Divide by resolution. Because the screen's actually two resolutions wide. I said that, but I don't know if that's mathematically correct, so please forgive me. Times 100. And then spacing percent times i. As a float. Well, there's the number zero on every slot. Um, let me make this resizable just to make sure, because I'm picky about this. Go should be run. Okay, it does kind of look like it's working, but the problem is, when it gets really small, see the text doesn't actually get smaller. So, at weird resolutions, the text will like stretch, but. That's fine. Don't play the game in this resolution. And I'm assuming it works for um, my Kai DPI monitors. But if we have resizable false, it's fine. Hmm. Let me just see. This is how I want it. If I have 200 flints. Not exactly. Uh, horizontal align left, maybe, or right. Hmm, left. Well, let's just do value is format. Like I times. 25, just so I can see. Oh, wait. Now my talking is going to be really bad because I'm sitting here and working something out first time. Hmm. Left or right feels a little bit wrong. Let's just move move over just a tiny little bit. Minus like two percent. Oh, don't open more of these. I feel like I need to be right aligned. Makes more sense that way. I'm getting close, don't worry. And then we'll be done with this. Why is this not working? Why is this weird? Make sure everything else is right. Position type, absolute. It's like the text is centered. Uh, let's make the text. I get really big. And let's make uh, like 20 inventory slots just to make sure everything's working. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's right aligned. 
Hmm. Rightmost character is immediately to the left of the render position. Bound start from the render position and advance leftward. Is that the behavior I'm seeing? No. I don't feel like it is. Let me make sure if these were all zero. Or I'll just I noodle right before I become a lunatic. Huh. I don't feel like the numbers 1 and 2 are set up right. But I also don't feel like it's aligned right. Mm, dogs. This isn't changing anything. I'm losing my mind. Yeah, this isn't changing anything. Uh, the text here says hello now. So in the far left box, when it says hello, the L is aligned in the middle with center. Now if I do left, the L is aligned at the center. If I do uh, right, in the um, L is aligned at the center. So this doesn't change anything. I've been being a lunatic. Align self, flex end. has a line center, only this item will be at the end. Auto, maybe? Maybe it's because I copy and pasted code from an example that I didn't understand? No, nothing has changed. Position type, absolute. Relative? Relative would be wrong. Uh... Sure, whatever. Okay, I'm done fighting with this. It would be janky, but it's fine. Let's make the font size 19 and move on with our lives. Okay, I actually want to say uh, text. Let's get the ID of this abomination. And I want to. Alright, let's get let's get ugly. Dot with child. All right. Just let me do the crazy stuff. I, there's a way to like do the builder inside a closure and make the child as you go. This also will work. You unhappy with this? Hmm. I'm getting too fancy for my own good. Oh, duh. Why am I doing all this nonsense? I can just do add child. I'll make this first. Delete all these weird comments. And push commands dot add child text. I hope the child doesn't change the transforms. It does. Uh, oh, and I'm using a non UI entity hierarchy.
so I can't make it a child. Hmm. Hmm. I've spent 20 minutes on this, so let's just create a component and flag it as um, uh, UI count text. Pub strut UI count text. Lowercase u or lowercase i, sure. Um, uh, slot, which will track um, what slot the text counts as. UI count text with slot i. And I'll give it a name. Does I already have a name? I think it did. I can give it a new one probably. Insert name new uh, inventory count. You're not happy about? Oh, because it's not actually a child now. Ah, okay. Gross. I also don't want to show the number zero if the inventory is empty, but whatever. Um, let me, I, I, I really need to clean these up. Um, UI text, sure. And... Let's say uh, UI text dot push. Because I don't want all these on my e GUI. I've gotten really bad about talking because I'm a bit flustered. And then commands dot spawn. I don't think this is going to let me do this with children. Percent UI text. Sure. And you're not happy because it's style components and on hierarchy. This warning here should tell me what I need to do to fix it. So I think what I need to do is spawn a UI bundle of some kind. Which I think I just need to spawn like a node. Let's go here to the docs. Let's look at node. Bad thing. Ooh, maybe UI node. Just can I just make this a node? dot insert node default don't feel like default's gonna work but then we go it's gonna crash actually I'm wrapped on a none probably his default here isn't gonna work so let's do new uh, 1600 by 900 can I new? Can I do new here? No, of course not. Uh, size is back two new, and this should be a uh, floating point numbers. Do, do, do. Still crash. Unwrap on a none. Okay, we're in hell. Vector stretch none or entity to stretch. My lack of UI knowledge is showing. I'm looking back at the UI examples. 
ui.rs. Tell me something I don't know. Spawn node bundle. Delish. Let's try node bundle. I knew it was node something. Can I do a default? You know, just work yourself out. Default doesn't exist. Oh, insert bundle. I could do spawn bundle. Hmm. Node size sixteen hundred. Why did you come out to be flex relative transform zero? Oh, you've centered yourself by height. Okay. Copying and pasting from the example. Do your weird default stuff that I don't know how to copy. Oh, beautiful, we're in. I had to set the size to be infinite. Okay, and we can give you a name. All right, that was a lot. Ah, uh, insert name new uh, inventory text all right okay that's that's worth for commit uh, added inventory systems don't actually remember what I did but I just want to be able to go back ah, I need to add the text count Oh, never mind. I have. Cool. So now let's do uh, the inventory UI. I'm, I'm done using the UI uh, for this video for now. The documentation on it is a bit rough. And more if it's just not the cheat book. So there's not, no one's actually done the work to write it up yet. Uh, okay, so let's update inventory UI every frame. So what I need is query for the inventory. Which is query. I've already like, forgot how to write Bevy. Hmm. Should I just use everything with the UI? Am I changing my mind? Code around a text bundle. I guess I could. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I. This loads the font every time, which is kind of gross, but also I don't care. It's a startup function and we'll clean this up if we have time. So let's let's not do UI. Maybe if we do more of these in the future, I'll get better and better with the UI, I'm sure. So uh, let's get the graphics, which is our resource of placeholder graphics. Let's do, um, what inventory? Equal inventory query dot single. Don't need to mutate it. And when I create my boxes, I don't tag them. So let's also tag the boxes in the same way we tag the text. UI box.
and your slot is I. And now, in the inventory, we're going to loop over uh, for I, I comma slot in inventory dot items dot iter dot enumerate. And let's get uh, boxes and I guess the text. I don't know why I copy and pasted that. Box query is going to be a query for this uh, UI box for now. While I just think about what we'll need. And some commas. And then text query. Which will be a um, UI text. And I'm going to go back to looking at the UI example for how to change the text. I guess it can show me looking at this. You get the text and you get sections uh, dot value. Okay. Sure. So we'll get the text mutably. I'm sure. Mutate for um, count or text count or text in text query dot mute. So it's probably like n squared when it could be linear, but you know, I probably could loop over it the other way, loop over the text once and find them in the inventory, but it's you know size twenty at most. And this needs to be a tuple. If text count dot slot equals i, so this is the slot we want to update. I want to say text dot sections zero dot value mutable text and iter mute dot value equals format um, i. I just do like i two string or something, but this will do. And it's not actually i, it is the slot dot count. Let's see if that works. Mm, add system. Uh, update inventory UI. The number one showed up. How exciting. Okay. Next, um, for all the boxes, what do we need to do? Probably need their children, don't we? Uh, but what if they don't have children? With children? I think you can do this and get away with it. Also not something I've covered in the tutorial. I think this lets you do an optional. Um, so for uh, children, mm, doesn't need to be mutable. Oh, box is a word. <sighs> or box is a keyword, I mean. Of course it is a word. And we want to move over the box query. Let's see if the UI box Then, bool. Why are you a bool? Is it optional? Oh, you just use optional. Duh. Uh, probably an ampersand. Hmm. Still not happy. Cheat book. Help. Where's my cheat book? Ah, uh, queries.
do do query option ah put the ampersand in the wrong place okay so if you have children why do i want your children i need commands i need to spawn something uh commands Hmm. I guess I'm going to need another type of component called um, UI box contents. I'm going to want to query for, which will be a sprite. And so when I get the children, as I said in the video, we'll need um, a second query box contents query which is going to query for mutable texture atlas sprites of anything that has our UI box content tag. Okay. This needs to be mutable. And let's see. If the box slot equals I and box, if the box slot equals I, if children, not is some, or hmm, you, do, you can't do if let and, so let's do children dot is some and um, slot dot count does not equal zero. If it is some and it equals zero, I want to kill those children. So commands dot children. So if you have some children and your box is empty, this is getting messy. I'm going to have to rework this. Um, so for child and children dot unwrap because it is some janky, but it'll do. Uh, commands dot if and then if that child is in the box contents query box contents query dot contains maybe dot get um child that is some probably what if is something here then we want to kill that child this will go untested for now this actually whole if statement will not be testable because we don't have a way to drop items. Uh, and into iterator. Let's get here. Get returns a result. So if it's okay. And then we have to dereference child. Untested. What is this supposed to do? Um, despawn if there is a graphic, but the count is now zero. That's what this is trying to do. So if this UI box has nothing in it, but it has children, meaning we spawned a graphic, then I want to despawn it. Probably the opposite order of how you'd logically go about this. So now if the... Um, count is not zero, I don't need to do anything. But if the children is none, or more of, hmm. I guess for now this works. I'm thinking about like if you have a child of the UI box that is not the graphic, then what should happen? But we don't have that case yet, so why am I trying to engineer around it? So if the children is none and the slot count does not equal um, zero, then we need to create a child. 
create a graphic. Uh, this needs a lot of reworking because if you like somehow in one frame change from having wood to flint, the graphic won't update because we're only checking the count. Um, but for now, this works. Commands dot dot spawn copy and paste. Oh yeah, spawn the flint sprite again. Not what I wanted. Command start. Oh, I didn't use my correct tool. So, oh, ah, okay. So we get the the item of the type we have of slot dot item. What? Slot here. Player inventory is it a T entry? Oh, it just says item. Sorry. Uh, now we're lost. Yeah, slot that item. No graphic for item. Yeah, that creates a new thing. And then we need to spawn this white sheet bundle, which I need to copy and paste again. White sheet bundle. Not going to make it pick up a bowl, and I'm going to name it item graphic. Okay. So if the children is none, slot count doesn't equal zero, I want to spawn a graphic for this specific item. And I want it. Same item graphic. I guess I want to add it as a child to the box. So I need the entity here. This is really gross. I'll go back over and explain this if it works. Commands dot entity box entity dot add child. Uh, what graphic? Cool that so we can get the entity, get its ID, graphic, dead code, have not used the contents, ooh, one, and it's there, let's make it a little smaller, but we did just successfully pick up an item. We have one flint in our hands. Okay, let's make a test drop item. Which we'll say, um, we will need the keyboard because we want to test, we want to try to drop the flint to make sure our despawning actually can get tested. So we want the input key code again. And if, if uh, keyboard dot just pressed key code uh, one. Is there a numpad one? Come on, let me enter the key codes. Key one. And I wanna get the inventory a single mute. So I'm gonna to need to mutate it. So we can remove it when we press one. Do, do, do. Now inventory dot items dot zero because zero is going to be mapped to one dot count equals uh, zero 
and item equals none. It's going to be hard. I'm, I need to make this very redundant that if I forget to erase the item type, it will uh, not get upset. This needs a lot of bulletproofing. So now I can pick it up, compress one, and the system doesn't actually run. Woohoo! Just mashing keys on my keyboard. Pick it up, mm, drop it. Number goes to zero, item doesn't despawn. Why not? Rising if what? So slot count is zero. Hmm. Box contents query, get child. Oh, because I'm not giving it the UI box contents tag, so it doesn't match that query. <sighs> Boom, I have destroyed Flint. That feels really good. That is an inventory system, which was one of the goals for today. Uh, so let's try to explain this nightmare of a function. Uh, let's actually maybe spell stuff right. Invin. We always try to spell stuff consistently, even if it's not right. So what this function does is we get the inventory then we do all of our text work. Okay, we get the inventory. Then we loop over everything in the inventory, getting the count an item at a slot in its location with i using enumerate. Then we go over all the text, and if the text is the slot that we're working on, then we'll set the value of the text to be our count. That's straightforward. Then, which I guess we could make it nothing if the count equals zero. If uh, slot.count equals zero, I want it to, to not show up. So we'll just make it empty string. Okay. Not two string, sure. Probably. Yeah. Then for the actual graphics, which are not proper UI graphics, we want to, we get the box entity. It's, if it has children, we get those. So we use um, an optional query, which is something I need to write down to cover in the tutorials because that ended up being useful. We get an optional query for the children and we get the tag UI box. If it's the correct slot and it doesn't have any children yet, we will create the graphic like so. Yeah, that's all straightforward, I hope. We've done that a bunch. And we get the correct graphic from our cool hash map. And then if it has children, but the slot count has become zero, then we need to destroy the children. Yeah. Is there anything else that needs to be done here? This feels buggy. Um, I'll just mark it as probably buggy. What do you... Oh, I was going to mutate it because I wanted to change the index. If you do have children, I want to change the index. All right, let's just go ahead and do that while we're here. Let's add some complexity. Uh, so let's change the graphic if you do have children. So let's get the uh, for child. 
uh, if, you're, if your children is some. And then if your child is a texture atlas sprite, uh, sprite equals, uh, what did I call this query? Box content query. Uh, iter mute. Wait, box content query dot get the child. Um, sure, let's just expect it for now. Uh, non sprite child of box. Non sprite. Why do I always type none instead of non? So we now have the sprite, and the sprite dot index. Texture out with sprite does have an index. Don't tell me it doesn't. Index will equal this nightmare. Format this. Oh, get mute. Sure. What are you upset about? Found use size, expected use size. Add an asterisk. Sure. Gladly. And it's not happy about the nightmare I've created of is some and unwraps. Oh, actually, I can just test this with the e GUI. So I don't actually need to pick things up. I can change it over to an axe, which will crash, because we need to make more graphics. Let's make uh, some graphics. Let's make a little axe thing, I guess. Do do do. What does an axe look like? Oh man, that's an axe. That'll chop something down, I'm sure. Yeah. Just add some tough to it. Just make some grass. That's grass. Let's make some twigs. That's twigs. Oh, let's make a log while we're here. It's gonna be a, a nice rectangle. Beautiful. Don't you love art? It's a log, an axe, twig, grass. And might as well make a campfire, because that's the end goal. Campfire, let's make it big. I'm trying to put these in as bad a place as I can. Um, so that we actually have to know what we're doing with the texture atlas sprites. Is there a bucket in this? Has to be. Paint bucket. Boop. Yeah. That's a campfire. Alright, so export. And let's get these added to the um, hash map. So, down in graphics. Well, okay, this, this file is getting overwhelming. Make sure I'm actually recording, as I like to do, after an hour of work. Load graphics. So we have the grass index. It's going to show up at 48, 0, and go to 64, 0. Probably off by 1 still, but hasn't bit me in the butt yet. The axe index goes from 16 
32, 32. And the twigs can go from uh, 48 to 64, I guess. And I guess it goes 16 to 32. And fire index. Uh, it goes from 32. Oh, wait, it's log index is next. Right? 32 to 48. And 32 to 48. And we'll do fire at the end. So now we can insert all these nightmares of grass, which is the grass, oh, come on, which is the grass index. We have the twig index, which is item type twig. We have the axe, which is item type axe. And we have a log, which I think I called wood, which I'm not going to call a log, just kidding. We're gonna make this wood. Just kidding. We're gonna do wood. Wigs. Sure. Hmm. Something's not happy. What's well, not happy? What have I done? Did I delete my entire code? I'm missing a single curly brace or something, I bet. Or I've copied one too many. Oh no. All right, scream if you see it. What in the world? Okay. Expected right curling. I'll just give you one. Does that make you figure out what's going wrong? It is in this nightmare. Ta da! No. Oh, well, I was missing a couple of those. Okay. Now in the player inventory, change this to, say, max. Doesn't change. Probably because I broke this. Oh, did I just delete this? Hmm. Write.index equals that. I feel like I deleted a giant block of code somewhere. All right, pick that up. Your inventory. Now you hold an axe. Now oh, that's a twig. Now you hold a twig. Now you hold grass. Now you hold wood. A little janky. This does work. Now you hold an axe. Okay. I need to fix the axe. So the axe and the twig have the exact same. Thing, which is not right. I think the axe is underneath the twig. So it's probably uh, 64 to 
96. Oh, wait, no, it'd be under. So it'd be 32 to 48. Pick it up. Player inventory uh, slot three now has an axe. Now it's 10 axes. Never mind. That was a flint. Now it's a grass. All right, where's the axe on my sheet? Hmm. Ah. It's uh, 16 to 32 and 32 to 48. Player, inventory, swap four. Now it's an axe. That's an axe. Now is wood. I don't have pine cones. Flint. Twig. Oh, right, we made an inventory system. Um, let's make it back down to five. Sweet pine cone. We don't have graphics for it. This needs to be cleaned up. I can do a match here or an if else. I guess I can do that. Match children dot, uh, some child. So if the children is a child, lose my mind. I'm gonna mess up all my curly braces again. So if it is a child, do that. If we have none, then do this. Collapsible if. Now oh, it's fine, the curly braces. Do, do, do. This delimiter is probably not closed right. Oh, well, I mean. I mean, none of them are closed, right? Okay. Some child is not closed, right? This is what happens when you don't do the formatting yourself. So, there's some child. And then none, when end and ten. Two times. So if slot count is zero, match children. So this closes out the none. This closes out the match. And that should close that out. Beautiful. I don't actually use the child. Do I? Children. Ah, I can remove the sun wrap. And then, if what, uh, some children, oh, and this is now just an else. I don't know why I'm doing all this just to appease Clippy, but it's fun. Clock. 
collapsible if else if what? Delicious. Thank you, Clippy. You have made my code disgusting. Well, it's happy. So how does that change the code? So if the slot count is zero, not equal to zero, we change the graphic or we create the graphic. And if it is zero, uh, we delete. Slot empty, remove children or despawn. Cool. What, probably three and a half hours in to the video now. I don't know how long you can go for one of these. I guess I had a lot more ambition than I should have going into this. I still have like four more hours in my day though. Um, so I'll just keep going. Um, people have to give me feedback. I'm sure no one has made it this far in, but people have to give me feedback if this is actually helpful or not. And I'll put chapters in the video so people can jump around. Well, after an hour of that nightmare, I'm ready to go take a quick walk around. And when we come back, I guess it's time to do crafting. So I'll have to, on my pace around, I'll think about how I want to do crafting. Cool. All right. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So I took a nice long lunch break. So I have no idea what we have done so far in the code. But that means it's a good time to do some cleanup. So let's go ahead and make an inventory system. And let's make this a plugin and see where we're at. Use very, give me a second to warm my fingers back up. Um, we want a pub strut inventory plugin. Hmm. We want an impo plugin for it. <sighs> Why is this? Oh, my code completion is not going to work until I tell Rust that this is a real file mod uh, inventory and use inventory, inventory plugin. Sure. Now here, why are you upset? Unused. What, what is wrong with you? No inventory plugin and inventory. I kind of disagree. Oh, good grief. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Oh, wait. Have you figured it out now? Haha. <laughs> All right. App dot. What all needs to go in here? Probably all this, uh, yeah. all of this garbage. Do I want to take the time to make this generic? Probably not. I'm just thinking right now. So if we make this generic, it doesn't get us anything for this game, but it makes it easier to like reuse and ship to other games. So let's see. We want the update inventory UI function, definitely. Don't need drop item tests anymore, especially because we can just do that by hand. The inspector. This is a lot of code. We want to spawn the inventory UI. Yeah. So we'll get that startup system. Where is that at? Spawn inventory UI. Uh, we want to register that here. Uh, 
graphics. Yeah, making it generic might be hard because of how we've done graphics, but I'm sure it's possible. And we just need to import all this garbage. Oh, and we need the inventory size. Probably should be defined in inventory UI or in the inventory plugin. Probably doesn't need to be a constant, could be a um, parameter on the plugin. That is what it is. Pickupable item types. Player pickup. Yeah. Okay. And let's just see if this is a working game. Add plugin inventory plugin. Actually, yeah, let's just make this have a count. Let's, let's just have some fun. Let's make this, um, hmm, but I can't, can't make this a fixed size if I do count like that. Let's not have fun. Fun is overrated. I was going to actually take the time to make it generic, but we're not doing that. make everything public. Short. All right, game runs. Game crashes. My favorite. Unwrap a nun. The E GUI inspector. Why? Come on. Respectable registry. Ah, you know, fair enough. Probably have added those in the wrong order. And you learned so many um, places where order matters that I did not know and I did not cover in the tutorial. All right, look at us. We're so pretty. All right, pick up Flint. Flint should be behind the player. Is that zero, zero, zero? Where's the player? Where do I spawn the player? It's one player. Ah, uh, transform. Transform. Uh, what? Default. Translation. Should be vec3. New. Zero. Zero. Put the player at like 700. Completely arbitrary, but it's got to be somewhere. And commas. And now the player should be on top. Cool. So we got Flint. Ooh. The distance calculation. So now we're 700 units away from it. So I want to do VEC2 distance. Is there a way to get the XY of this? Ooh, nope, of course not. Okay, well, now it begins. <sighs> Let's see what we have on VEC3. You can't go to definition on this because it's, um, you know, I'll truncate. Some by macros, truncate. On Kate and truncate. Disgusting. Beautiful. <clears throat> hmm. Guess let's uh, spawn more items. So let's change Flint spawning. How do I want to spawn more items? I'm 
I really want to do it procedural. Procedural. So let's just change this to be spawn items. And then say we got a flint spawn. Uh, okay, let's make a helper function. Uh, spawn item, which needs uh, commands, uh, mutable reference probably. Graphics as a reference, and it needs the item to spawn, or just make it name to spawn. And this is an item type. Now let's we'll take all of this garbage and put it here. So here I just need to spawn, no graphic for item, uh, item here, it's going to be to spawn, because I'm assuming it's pick upable, and is there no way to go from enum to string in Rust? How do I get enum as a string? Implement debug on it. No thanks, um, I'll just call it ground item. It's probably fine, and I always like to return the ID. Come on. Sometimes the code completion is just a little bit slow. So now, oh, let's actually give it a position while we're here. Position. Even a back too, why not? Um means we want transform transform default translation uh, position dot extend with uh, zero you're not happy because you're missing a comma people are driving fast by my house All right so now we can do spawn item by giving it the commands, the graphics, um, item type, flint, and vec2, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Okay. Needs to borrow that. Well, you can have it. And we need vec2 new. And let's put one at set eight, six, one, oh, let's do minus six, let's do uh, four, uh, 35, and uh, 5.5. 5. That should create a nice like bundle of flint. Cool. Um, change this to be spawn item again. Oh, wait, sorry. Spawn items. Good to be. Why do I always hit escape? Okay. So there's our flint. We could do this randomly if we wanted. Okay, we need flint and we need twigs. Okay, let's put all of these at negative y values. Spawn a couple of twigs. And put them just around aesthetically. Cool, we have twigs. If we pick up the twigs, they show up in our inventory. How many dad padding to the sprite? I'm losing my mind. Oh, let's just uh, slide everything over one. Slide you over one. 
slide you all down one and slide you two down one and slide this down one this isn't proper padding because the transparency would leak if we had any of them next to each other but it should be fine We just, you, it wouldn't be good if we were tiling them like that. So now in the graphics, good grief. I procrastinated too long on this. <clears throat> the flint starts one pixel over more to the right, ends one more over to the right. You end one more over to the right. You end one more down now, probably. Be nice if I had like a, a Python script or something to do this automatically. I think all the sprite sheets from Kinney come with XML sheets that tell you where everything is. So maybe this is just a problem for me. Why is the twig still leaking? I need to go one more over. I guess that is the off by one thing I was talking about. Uh, okay, so these are actually 50. They they all have actually been off by one on their starting X and starting Y probably. Probably start at 18. You probably start at 50. This has now become un impossible to ration about as a human. Is what it is. Oh man. Does that not feel nicer? Oh, and where's my box? Box is now at 30, 34. Probably. Oh, beautiful. It's a video game. Let's make the box bigger. Where do I spawn the boxes? I'm going to regret this. No, I now spawn that in its actual plugin. So the box graphic. Sometimes just like juggling code around like this helps you to find where things are bad. So that's why I'm just taking a minute. I'm definitely not just hiding from uh, how horrifying it's going to be to try to do the crafting. Okay, and spacing now should be 20. We're actually getting um, some good testing on this. Hmm. Uh, text now should be a tiny bit closer to the bottom. It's still, it's like centered. It doesn't feel right. One, two, three. Let's put it seven. Let's make the font size a little bit bigger. Item UI can now be just slightly bigger. This all does nothing, I'm just kind of passing time. I feel like all of these are offset just a tiny bit. So it's at a, let's just cheat. And add like 3%, 2% to it. Of course, uh, I think uh, 1%. But if I was doing the entities or the UI correctly, this would be all automatic. Sure. Zero nine. Okay, uh, crafting, crafting. Let's make progress. What does it mean to craft?
I won't. One of your resource of all the possible crafting recipes. So let's do a pub strut crafting recipe. Which is going to need a vector of item types uh, needed. Which is probably going to need probably like the same inventory entry stuff, but it's different. So we need um, a pub strut. We'll just copy the same strut and have it different just for naming sake. Pub strut. Mm, give me a second. Okay, back. I guess like item and count. Why not? Doesn't matter. This has the item, which is an item type, and it has a count, which is the count. And a crafting recipe. So we're gonna have needed, which is gonna be a vector of item and count. and produces, which is going to be an item type. Maybe even an item and count one day. An item type for now. And now we need um, pub strut crafting book, which will have everything that can be crafted for now. So, Craftable, it's a vector of crafting recipes, I guess. Can't say I've ever done this before. And so now we're gonna insert a resource of crafting recipes, crafting book. We're gonna have craftable. I think you can do like this kind of notation, crafting recipe. Hmm, is it curly braces? It doesn't feel right. To the rust by example. I'm a tad bit rusty. Rust by example. Get it? Rusty? Uh, Vec. You do square brackets. So a crafting recipe, just made out of uh, needed and produces. So needed is going to be a vect of item count, item and count. We need one twig, so item is item type, uh, twig, count, one, and item and count. Item, item type, uh, flint, and count is one. Close that bracket, and then produces. Did I not put an S here? I did. Produces an X, item type X. Is this scalable? Nope. Does it work? Yeah. Maybe it's scalable. Maybe we could create a, a helper function to actually construct this resource. Like a startup function or something. Probably even read it from a file. What? Uh, that's all for the future. All right, well, let's do a simple craft. Add system. Uh, test crafting. So what does test crafting need? It needs the inventory. And it needs the recipe book. Uh, so let's get mute or 
guess it does need to mutate the inventory, doesn't it? Inventory. Which is a query for the inventory. <clears throat> And uh, the crafting book, which is a resource of crafting book. And let's also get the keyboard input so we can make this happen on key press. Why, 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 why did you decide that's what I wanted? Uh, a resource, type input, type key code. Keyboard at all. Keyboard dot just pressed. It's my crafting key. T. Ah, that's not intelligent. E. If you just press E, we'll try to craft an X. Hmm. How do you decide what to craft? I guess E will just always be mapped to craft axe. Right, let's do a, another function. Can craft, which will take the inventory. It's an inventory reference. And it will take the crafting recipe that we want to do. And it'll return a boolean if we're able to craft it. So what we need to do, and then okay. And then here to use this function, we'll say if can craft inventory. Oh, inventory. Come on. Inventory equals inventory query dot single mute. inventory and crafting book dot recipes here craftable no that's going to be called recipes Just print can craft X. And let's go ahead and just give the player an X. Uh, so we need um, a gif item function as well. Fn give inventory. Inventory item. That will return a bool. Probably should return a, a result, I guess. Uh, bool. I'll put it to do here. In the future, if inventory full. Sure. So giving an inventory item needs the item to give and the inventory. So let's get the inventory. And to give, which is an item type. Okay. So this is going to steal the code we did earlier. And it will return true here, true here. And it'll return false if you didn't actually pick it up. And then the despawn int will only happen here if give inventory item inventory. And what's the item called? Pick up that item. So we successfully picked it up. 
What do you want? You want me to combine these? Uh, yeah, might as well. Sure. Send range. Well, this is going to mutate the inventory. So the short circuiting here does work, but it's kind of gross to do that in that way. Um, sure. I'm not going to format until I finish something. What are you not happy about? Close the delimiter at 157. Cool. So you're not happy. And this is now to give. that there cool so now we pick up you do need it to be mutable so now when we pick up items we give the inventory item to the player and if he successfully took it then we'll despawn entity which is a to do not always despawn I guess more if we need to change its state in a profound way hey so now we can craft. So we need to make sure that we have everything in our inventory. I don't really want to make this bulletproof yet. So for now, let's just loop over everything in the recipe. For, uh, I guess, um, item and count in recipe dot needed dot iter. Why are you not happy? Oh, probably because I don't return something. If, and then for invent, item in inventory, uh, slot in inventory dot slots dot items dot iter. If item slot dot item equals item and count dot item. This is probably gross. I'm sure there's a much better way to do this. I'm just kind of live coding and it's been a few hours. So if the item equals the item and item slot dot count is greater than what you need, item and count dot count, So, if the item's the item, and the, let's do an, a flag here, like mute bull um, found item, goes false, and let's do found item equals true, because we found it. This could be a very functional thing, probably in one line. It's not how my brain works. Okay. Yeah, we're getting there. Stop complaining. If not found item, then we need to return false. And then we'll return true. So theoretically what this does so it goes through every item in the recipe, and then it will see if you have that item and enough of it in the inventory. And if you don't, it'll return false. And if you have not yet returned false, and you've went through all the items in the recipe, you return true. Because we have successfully crafted the item. So we can craft. So if you press E, and you can craft an axe, you can craft an axe. So now, 
type of crafting recipe should probably implement copy, I think. Can't think of why it wouldn't. Um, derive, copy, clone and copy. Why not? Can you not copy a vector? Can't copy a vector. Okay. Can't clone. Oh, well, yeah, you can. You can clone and copy this all day. Probably even compare it. Sure. Now can I do copy? Or is vector specifically not allow it? That makes sense. Vectors could be big. So we'll just clone. Or just take a, rest, a reference to it. Yeah. You don't, you just need to borrow that. You don't need ownership. Okay. Oh, and we don't need return. We just type the word true. And inventory will give you the axe for now, for testing. Uh, give inventory item, inventory. And uh, crafting book, not recipes, uh, zero dot produces. And then this function is definitely part of the inventory. So put this here as a public function. And we need to import it. And what are you upset about? Can't borrow it as mutable. Why? Oh, well, yeah, wait, why? Oh, mute. What are you upset about? Expected inventory, found inventory. Yeah, okay. So now if I press E, nothing happens. Pick up some flint, some twigs. Now if I press E, I get an ax. That's crafting. Okay. So we craft an ax. And now we just need to uh, take inventory items. So let's do uh, take inventory items. Uh, if it uh, doesn't have item. So now we have two take and an amount. And we're going to loop over all the slots in the inventory and if that hmm if slot equals item to take slot count minus equal one. Oh, let's just do true here. If slot dot count is less than the amount to take, I want to return false because you tried to take more than you had. Yeah, that actually might just work. So we just need to take the inventory item for our, all of the items. So let's uh, loop again over everything we need and take them. 
Probably I want the um, inventory to be made out of item and counts. It probably could be like a strut uh, tuple or something. We'll clean it up. I'm not cleaning it up today, though. So we can craft an axe. So we need to take, take inventory item, import it. Also, the tutorials never say when we import stuff because it's just such a simple error to solve. Um, we need a mutable inventory. We need uh, item and count dot item, and then this function could take the item and count and count dot count because we're always doing the dot item and dot count stuff. Can't find recipe. Okay, sure. Um, crafting book. Recipes, zero. What are you upset about? Remove the ampersand. Can do, boss. So now, you can pick up twigs. Press E. Craft an axe. Needs to be less than or equal to. Probably need that for the can craft as well. We get some flint. Can't craft. Pick up a twig, craft it, craft it, craft it, craft it, craft it. Taking item isn't working. Oh, because it's just less than here. The other one needed the equal to. Pick that up. Craft. I can't craft, and my sprite's broken. Craft. So, why is the sprite's broken? Uh, inventory, uh, uh, camera UI. What did I put these on? The player. No. Oh, I made these a child of the parent because I'm a lunatic. So you have texture atlas, right? Index six. Oh, wait, no, that's the boxes. Do you have a children? If you I box. How did I structure this? So I can pick it up. Do you guys not have children? Oh, item graphic. So yeah, why don't you have an item graphic? All right, let's go look at the code. I guess it's time to set up for this one. Ah, uh, guess I don't need to return false. So it's somewhere in this giant mess. So what's happening? Okay. When the slot count equals zero, and you have children, I despawn them, right? Let's go look and see if that actually happens. This might be a misunderstanding with how I think uh, children work. So this is the camera you have an item graphic ah you still have children just there's none of them mm. okay so checking 
Matching against children doesn't do it. So I actually need to do if what children dot iter dot count equals zero, then you actually have no children. And I need to do the none variety again. Ah, uh, um. Or I can remove the children component from you. If you have children, I want to remove your children component. I already own you, right? Fox, fox entity, fox in. So for child and children, I want that. And then I want to take the box entity and I want to remove. Also, I've never removed in the tutorial. Children. This, what does this need? Children. How does this work? Ah, well, it needs a type. Children. How interesting. Okay. And then if the slot count equals zero, do I have mutable access to the inventory here? Guess not. Um, so when the slot count becomes zero, it's the bug I saw. I guess let me express it in case anyone didn't see it. So I pick up my flint, pick up a twig, craft an axe, pick up a twig. It goes to slot two because the slot remembers that it was originally a flint. Which is not good. So I think I'm just going to make a like system that always runs. Called inventory cleanup. Uh, let's just make a... Inventory consistency forcer. Which is just going to force the inventory, if the slots are ever zero, to set the type to none. And if the... Yeah, yeah. We'll just do it all here. Inventory query. Just going to be a query for the inventory. It's going to be mutable. We're going to let mute inventory. Call inventory query uh, dot single mute. And now uh, four slots for each slot in inventory. I wish I could spell uh, items. If slot dot count equals zero, then slot dot item should equal item type none. And if slot dot item equals item type none, then the count should be zero. Um, Enter mute. Mutate it. Uh, so does this silently hide bugs? Or does it fix bugs? Because I don't want to just silently, like if something's going horribly wrong, I don't want to just quietly uh, force it to be fixed. But this should prevent me having to like check all the time if an item slot is empty. I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. So I pick up my twig, pick up a flint, craft. Flint now can go to item slot one. Doo -doo -doo. And I can get myself a couple of axes. Hmm.
So this is already becoming quite a long video. So I might record another session of this next Friday. We didn't quite get to the goal, but I might do like live coding sessions on Friday. Unfortunately, my internet means I cannot live stream game development yet because I live in the middle of nowhere. But what, what is this? Why did I include this? You'll have to let me know. I'll see if people love or hate this. And it's a skill I just want to get better at doing. So I might just keep doing it for the sake of me, regardless of the feedback. But let me know if this helps anyone. I'll put this on GitHub, and I'll link the GitHub in the comments if you want to take any of this. If you have feedback, uh, join the Discord server. I'll put a invite there, and you can come in and tell me how I've done everything wrong. And I'm sure it might be interesting to see how this develops as we go on through the weeks. So, feedback is always welcome. And I guess uh, remember to like and subscribe, join the Discord, and thank you for watching.